In this lesson, we'll continue our discussion of percents with some problem solving. First off, let's consider what you can think of for basic percent conversions. And you can go a little bit further than this, but these are the simple ones. Sometimes you can think of certain percentages as unit fractions, meaning that if you want to do a quick estimation of how much 10% of an amount is or 20% of an amount is, you can just simply think of it as a unit fraction, which helps you to just do quick division to find it. So just to go through this list, 10% would be like one-tenth, 20% would be like one-fifth, 25% would be like one-fourth, one-third is a little bit strange. Uh, it's technically 33 and a third percent, but if you're saying roughly 30%, that's about one-third, and 50% would be about one-half. Let's do some examples of this. 50%, as I mentioned, is thinking one-half. What is one-half of 600? Well, you don't really have to think about it too hard. Just divide it by two, and you get 300. 33 and a third percent was one-third. So if we're doing one-third of 900, well, just divide by three and you get 300. 20 percent of 1,000, that's thinking like one-fifth of 1,000. And so then, if you divide 1,000 by five, you get 200. And finally, 25 percent of 300, 25 percent is like one-fourth, and then you have one-fourth of 300. If you do 300 divided by four, this one's a little bit harder, but still not difficult, you get 75. Now, let's look at how we would handle these problems in general. The general idea is you've got some sort of statement of a percentage of a number is equal to a value. So one of the ways we can handle percent problems is to use a translation. The word of will generally translate to the multiplication symbol, and is will generally translate to the equal sign. So if we can always look at things in terms of is and of, that's one way to always solve these word problems. And anytime you run into the word what, or some sort of question, that's generally going to turn to your variable. In the first example, what is my variable? Is turns to equals. 85%, anytime I run into a percent, I'm going to turn it into a decimal. 0 0.85 of turns into multiplication, and I'm going to use the dot. I don't want any confusion of x versus times. So of, and then 76. And then from here, all I have to do is multiply it out. And I get 64.6. What percent of 32 is 40? Now I want to think about this for just a second. 40 is bigger than 32. So if 40 is a percent of 32, it's actually going to be more than 100. That's something to think about. What percent, there's your word what, and the percent is not going to turn directly into my answer. It's going to be how I'll format it when I'm finished. So what percent is x? Of is times 32, is becomes equals, and we have 40. Now we need to solve this equation. To undo the multiplication, I'll use division. Divide by 32 on both sides. And then to get a clean answer, let's say x is equal to, and do 40 divided by 32 as a decimal. I get 1.25, but that's not really the answer that I want. They asked for a percent. So I'll say, moving the decimal to the right, 125%. As I mentioned, 40 is bigger than 32, so I expect it as a percentage of 32 to be more than 100%. Next example, 1,250 is 50% of what number? If it's 50% of some number, thinking about our unit fractions, that means it's half of the number. So actually, you could just multiply by 2 and be done with it. But my point really is, if it's 50% of a number, then the number will be larger than what we're starting with. 1,250 is becomes equals. 50% is 0 0.5. Of becomes times. And what number? Let's write that as our variable. Divide both sides by 0 0.5. And we get x equals 2,000. 
500. Now the strategy that we just did is a method that can solve percent problems so long as you can turn all of your percent problems into sentences or questions that look like that. However, there's another strategy that is sometimes helpful. If you think about percentages, percentages are found by taking the amount over the whole. So you can say percent equals amount over whole. However, it's often better to change it to the algebraic equivalent statement of P times W equals A. The way that I'll often just say this is PW equals A. And that particular format is one that is very helpful to solve all the problems because in some cases it can be a little bit difficult to use this form of the problem. The variables stand for P being your percent. Make sure you write it as a decimal. The W is always the whole. So sometimes with the whole, we're going to look at it as what's the big value? It's not always the big value, but what sort of represents the big picture? And the amount will be the fractional part of the whole. That fraction could technically be larger than the whole if your percent is over 100. On a certain test, there are 50 questions. How many questions must be correct in order to earn a 70% on the test? We're looking for a C on a 50 question test. There's a few strategies you could use to figure this out, but let's use the PW equals A formula. P is your percentage. So P would be 0 0.7. Remember, write your percentage in decimal form. W is the whole. The whole in this case is the number of questions on the test. If you were to get all 50 rights, you'd get the 100, but we're not worried about 100. We're worried about a 70. So the whole is the 50 questions. And the amount that we're seeking is the unknown. This is your x. Now let's just use the formula. PW equals A. P is 0 0.7. W is 50. And we're searching for the number of questions that will give us that 70%. This is easy enough to solve. You just multiply the two together and you get 35, let's put a unit, of questions. So if you get 35 questions correct, then you will earn a 70% on the test. Another way you could maybe solve this and say, well, if there's 50 questions, they're worth two points each. If I were to get a 70, I would need to get 35 two-pointers, or you could just think of it as 70 divided by two. But this one, this next example, is not going to be as straightforward in terms of a shortcut. Your monthly salary is $2,200 and you have a 21% withholding for taxes. We want to know how much money total will be withheld from our check and how much will we have left. Your monthly salary is the $2,200. That's the whole. The percent is also given. So the percent would be 0 0.21, if we write it as a decimal. The whole would be the 2,200. And again, the amount for taxes is unknown. If we use the formula, PW equals A, we'll use 0 0.21 for P, 2,200 for W. And then if we simply calculate this, we will find out how much taxes you're paying on your paycheck. I get $462, and it would be nice to specify that this is the amount withheld for taxes. Now there's two questions. The second question is how much money will you have left? Your money left would be your $2,200 that you started with minus the $462 you're paying for taxes, and you end up with $1,738 remaining on your paycheck after you pay taxes. Next example. You make a $50 purchase and the clerk adds $4.50 in sale taxes. What percentage is the tax rate? So let's line it up again. P is the percentage. I don't know this one, so this time P is my variable. The whole is the big amount, the one that represents the whole thing. That's your $50 purchase. The amount is the fractional portion that we're considering, which is the $4.50. Now we want to know what is the tax rate. So if we set up PW equals A, P is my unknown X, my whole is 50, and my amount is 450. Divide by 50. 
and we get x is equal to 0 0.09, or better said, we could write that as a tax rate of 9%. Next example, your neighbors tell you they paid $4,437 in taxes, and that was 29% of their income. We want to know what is their total income. So don't jump onto this one too quickly. If you think about it, their total income is the whole. That's what is our unknown, is the whole. Normally the whole is given to us, but this time we're told the amount and the percent, and we're not told the whole. So if we write it down, our percent is 0 0.29, our whole is unknown, and our amount is 4,437. In the formula, PW equals A, that looks like 0 0.29 times your unknown is equal to $4,437. We'll divide by 0.29 in order to get X by itself. And I get that x is equal to $15,300 yearly wages. That's a pretty small amount, so honestly the government should be ashamed of themselves for taking 29% of somebody's income when it's that low. Usually people that fall in this tax bracket tend to not pay very much taxes because they need that money. The last example has to do with how percentages can be misconstrued when they're not done properly. Let's take a look at the story. Teen drug use rose 105% between 1995 and 1997. Okay, so that's their claim. But the data is a little bit different. A national survey showed that between 1995 and 1996, youth drug use rose 30%. So the first year was a 30% rise. But between 1996 and 1997, usage soared to 75%. And now here's their conclusion. Over the two-year period, the rise of 105% was attributed to whatever. But notice how they got their number. They added 30 and 75 together. This is a kind of common mistake with percentages. When percentages are stacked on top of each other, it's extremely uncommon for you to add or subtract in any form the percentage values themselves. Oftentimes, the stacking has some multiplication involved. And so we're going to do a little experiment to look at what would it look like if we had a certain number of people. We're going to suppose that at the beginning there were 1,000 teens. It's just an arbitrary value, but it will help us make our point. So if we started with 1,000, then we need to analyze what happens with the 30% rise between 1995 and 1996. To save a little bit of space, we'll do this a little bit faster than last time. The new cases in 1996 would be found by doing 1,000 times the 30% rise, which gives you 300 new cases. Thus, the total in 1996 would be the 1,000 plus the 300, which is 1,300. That is the total number of teen drug users in 1996 based on our little experiment here. Now let's look what happened from 1996 to 1997, where the usage jumped 75%. In 1997, they started with 1,300, and it rose by 75%, which would be 975 new cases. So then the total in 1997 would be 1,300, plus the 975 new cases, which comes out to be 2,275 in 1997. Now let's calculate the percent change from 1995 to 1997. They claim it to be 105%. To do this, let's calculate the new cases from 1995 to 1997. The total in 1997 was 2,275, and the original amount was 1,000. So we get 1,275. This number represents the number of new teens on drugs after two years when they had started at 1995. Let's calculate that as a percentage of the original amount. 
Without going into the detail of the PW equals A formula, I'm going to need to divide these to get there. The percentage would be the 1,275 new cases divided by the 1,000 original cases, which would be 1.275. As a percent, that would be 127.5%. Their claim was 105%, and as you can see, with the 127.5%, they were actually too low, which is unfortunate. So here's the mistake. Their percent was too small. Percentages stack by multiplication rather than addition.